I was taught to varnish by a girl, and I say girl because back then we were girls, um, in Marblehead, and I worked at the old Graves Yacht Yard in Marblehead, um, and that was in 1986. And I spent a year there, and Diane taught me how to varnish. Um, and at the time, I thought it was just going to be a get me through the winter job. And I, it kind of liked it. It was intriguing, but um, I didn't realize it would be my bread and butter for more years than anything else I've done in my entire life. And I do have a great affection for wooden boats. There have been many many favorites in my life that I've worked on, um, sailed on, and I feel really fortunate to be able to continue that um, by working on these boats. So I am really happy at what I do. I love them like they were my own. <laughs> We're using this roll sandpaper here because I'm just basically hand sanding it. I'm not putting it on one of the recommended hard or soft pads. I'm just gonna kinda take a hunk of it, fold it over, and very carefully just kinda pinch it back so it's nice and flat. We don't want any crinkles in it because um, crinkles would you know, sand even less perfectly than something flat and then um, I'm just gonna, I like to cut it with a knife on a board and then I fold it the size of the object. I'm sanding the tow rail is about that width um, and it's not ideal because this is abrasive against abrasive but it's what I have um, to work with so that's that. I have my desk mask on, which is always a good idea, and I might take it off just um, so you can hear what I'm saying. Um, I'm sanding this varnish because we need to have a good mechanical um, bond between the varnish we put on this year and the old varnish. So you can kind of imagine um, what that would look like. So this is a boat that's in for its annual varnish and um, we're going to put two coats of varnish on her and right now we're sanding, this is the first sanding she's getting and um, there's no tape on her yet because sanding down I'm also going to be painting the top sides. So in order to avoid like if I put tape on this paint right now, I'd have to be really careful not to, to ruin the edge of that tape. You want a nice sharp line there. So I'm gonna go ahead and do my sanding on down in and it's kind of a sh saving, a, saving a little bit of time and it'll make for a nice job. Um, when we go onto the paint, we won't have to get close to the varnish, the fresh varnish. It's folded so it basically is the same size as this because I don't want to get into that top. Um, that's where you, that's where you're going to lose a lot of your varnish. Um, in fact, Scotch Bright, a maroon Scotch Bright pad, probably is all I'm going to use on the top. I'm going to really kind of lean on it because um, you want to get good mechanical adhesion. Um, prepare the surface well for the varnish that's coming. And, um, and I also, after I've sanded with sandpaper, I'll go back over if there's any little low spots. Um, this scotch Bright's gonna get into them um, and at least give some mechanical bond until there's enough varnish built up that we can get a flat surface. On, on varnish that's in good condition, you could use 220 grit. Um, a lot of people do. It's nice on vertical surfaces like cabin house sides because it gives you more grit and the varnish will hang 
it will, it will help hold the varnish where it's supposed to go. And it'll, it'll help it from sagging. Um, so you might want to use 220 on a surface like that, but a flat surface, you're going to be able to put a lot of varnish on this. Um, and this is going to be an adequate grit, the 320. But, and all I'm doing now is I'm, I'm doing the mechanical bond, but also if there's any dust from the coat that went on last year or any, um, you know, other imperfections from last year's coat, I'm taking them out and I'm looking for any worn spots or dings that might have happened um, over the course of last summer. And this boat's in pretty good shape. Um, just trying to get as flat as I can. Uh, like that. There's a, anywhere you have um, where two planes meet, make sure you sand into that really well. Because anywhere you don't sand, the varnish isn't going to have anything to grab a hold of. And it can just peel right off. We've got this little lip on the outside here where it meets the top sides and I'm just going to actually get one of these little soft pads that you just stick, it, stick your sandpaper right onto that rascal like that and it's, it's not flat, it's going to it's not going to give you a perfectly flat surface, but again, I'm not overly concerned with that. This deck seam here, it's all crackly and crunchy. You can see it's a difficulty because ideally you should either sand and varnish that deck seam where it meets the varnish or put a piece of tape over it. But we've got all this crunchy stuff there and um, I could get a coarser grit and hard sand that, but I'm not going to take the time to do it today. And when I tape this, I'm going to varnish right over that deck seam that's right there. So I am going to make sure that it's got, it's been scuffed. So hopefully something will stick to that crunchy stuff. Um, again, you know, we're not saving babies. We're trying to get, um, trying to get your boat, the wood protected for the summer and um, it'll look nice. And that's really what this is about to me. I could take this thing off, um, which would certainly make my life easier for sanding and varnishing this tow rail. Um, and as you can see by all the varnish that's all over everything, this, the cotter pins are just basically buried in varnish. Other people over the course of time have not done that um, and it's up to you. I think it looks quite horrible and I'll usually give it a little, I don't like to find varnish on hardware but it's not the end of the world. You could put tape on this and I'll probably put some tape just on the top bit there where all that varnish is pooled. That's really thick stuff. So that's going to be more of a job than I want to get into right now, um, which is sad, but another year, maybe we'll do something about that. Let's get sanded a little bit. It won't hurt the, the pretty bronze. We'll patina again, but it'll patina without varnish on it. And another thing, if you do want to have like really sharp, clean hardware on your boat, um, making sure there's no varnish on this and also that patina, that verdigris, pretty stuff there. It will help if you clean it up a bit with like a scotch bright pad. Um, this thing right here is really good for getting in around hardware too. If, if you feel like it's too much of a chore to get in there without, with this sandpaper, which you can do crafty things like press it together really tightly or get a stick and sand in close to all this stuff because that's where it's going to 
you know, it's going to let go and water's going to get in there and it's going to creep and spread. This is a little scraper and if you look closely, you can see it's not perfect, but I'm going to try and get like a 45 degree angle on this. And then I've got a really good burr on that. It's super sharp. It's not incredibly perfectly flat, which depending upon what you're doing, if you're just going after little, you know, dings in your varnish, um, you can get away with that. If you were stripping varnish and you wanted to scrape the bare wood um, and get a really flat, you'd want a cabinet maker scraper. Um, which is a nice flat piece of steel that you sharpen and you can just peel wood, you know, like peel wood right off with it. But this is good for just little dings that you encounter. Um, and I've got it pretty sharp and I'm going to not take that burr off because I, I don't like to, but you could. You can see there's a an odd stippling on the surface of this varnish and that's the kind of thing that we want to sand out because if you and if you don't sand this completely like if I just sanded it like a little bit oh and there's a big chunk of dirt okay so you can see there's a big chunk of dirt there and then all this stippling, we want to sand that out because if we put varnish on top of that this year, that little dirt can show through our varnish. So that's the kind of thing we're after. That's why one of the reasons we sand is to get rid of last year's issues. We've just come to this little bit of a scuff on the rail. You can see some dead varnish and you can feel that it's essentially bare wood. This might have been from the previous year and it just never got a lot of varnish on it, so it's looking kind of yucky right now. And um, I'm not going to be too aggressive with it because it's not a huge deal, but I'm going to, I have this little block of wood. You can, you can go in your wood scrap bin and find a little block of wood that you like. And it's good for, you know, you get your piece of sandpaper and, um, and I just put it on there like that. and. Fold it so you've got nice sharp edges. And this skinny surface is going to be your best, most aggressive surface. Where it's important, like I've been doing this hand sanding stuff, and it's not, of course, not getting it perfectly flat, which is the most ideal thing. But when you encounter something like this, you don't want to end up accidentally digging a a dip in that. Like if you look back this direction right here, you can see there's a pretty good dip right here. Um, maybe if I sand it, it'll show up better. But that looks like something that happened a couple years ago maybe that um, somebody sanded out just by hand and they got a dip in it. You don't want to lose the shape of your wood. This Using this will help you maintain that. The only way to get your wood shape back at this point in the boat's life is to strip all the varnish and, and block the whole thing, which is going to be a big, big job. So for something like this, if you just block the flat surfaces that you know that you have, um, and I've got like 150 grit on this, so it's coarser grit. And I'm just going to block the flat surfaces around it. And that will let me see where my thing is. Then I'm going to really gently just take this and just kind of, you know, get it to feather in a bit. Try and get a little, little color out of it, but I'm not going to dip it up too much. Um, just for this year. But anyhow, and then this... This Scotch-Brite will 
It's not going to change the shape of this corner with it because it's just a scotch brite. but what it will do is it will get into the grain of the wood if there's bare wood and it'll help get some of the color back to it for us. Not perfectly, but anyhow, there's, there's a, little, a little repair. And um, when you're doing like, if you wanted to put a touch up of varnish on this bit here, you just want to make sure that you've got an area sanded out around it and then, um, you know, you're going to go put some varnish on it quite a ways around it and then you can come back and you're just going to, you're going to sand out. Sometimes you can even use your scraper to get that outer edge of the varnish around the thing and then you can feather in so you don't have a bump here where you've got your patch. As you're sanding, you know, you might encounter one or more of these little areas and um, the idea being that you would put your touch up on all these bare wood areas and then the next day you can come back and sand around it and then you could full coat the whole thing. A little scotch bright um, sandpaper is expensive so um, when it loads up, which it will, I just use it to kind of scuff off the gobbers of paint or varnish that's on the sandpaper gently. Um, and it helps renew it because once you get a buildup of paint or varnish on your sandpaper, it's riding over your surface, so it could be putting some damage into it, you know. So you want to make sure you get rid of that. Anyhow, little truck. You can see the varnish meets the topside paint right here at this little flush edge. And we want, we want that to be flush. What happens is you end up with a little ridge there because you do your varnish first and we're going to put tape here. And then we're going to put tape on this varnished edge when we do the topside paint. And if you don't get that nice and fair, you're going to end up with this built up edge over the course of years and also it'll be easier and easier to creep that top side paint up until you don't have any varnish left. I've seen it happen on a lot of boats. Um, this just keeps us honest. It keeps things where they should be. And I am almost sanding like that's completely flat now. And then when we tape today, we're going to be trying to leave as much of that varnish as we can. And you can see the line's not going to be perfect going down the whole boat. And that's because over the course of years, people haven't been careful taping and the paint creeps up and the varnish always loses out to the paint, of course. But um, that's what's going on here. And, and sanding the paint and the varnish at the same time is... Uh, a rogue move on my part and it's creating this disgusting pink dust that if we're not really careful about cleanup could end up as a pink haze in the varnish so we're going to be really careful when we clean this thing up um, to uh, cover our our rogueness <laughs> so we've done all the sanding we're going to do and um, now we have a vacuum cleaner with a nice fuzzy thing on it and a new vacuum bag because um, if you have a, a full vacuum bag you're not going to get the suction you really should have and varnish um, is the most important thing more important than paint even for getting dust up um, I have a little dust brush that as I'm vacuuming I'm going to put in places around hardware just to move any dust in there and if I have any holes even like little scuppers I I go I blow through them um, just to get any stubborn dust out because sure enough you're coming along you're varnishing and you stick your brush in the scupper and you collect dust um, so and this is good for getting dust out of corners as you're going and then I also have a clean rag that I'm going to use to, to wipe after I've vacuumed. Okay. 
and then because of the paint dust, I'm going to I'm going to wipe down um, quickly wipe down the whole surface with uh, probably just water, just a damp rag with water, and it'll leave lint on the surface. But we'll use a tack cloth and that will take care of our lint. And then we'll be ready for varnish.